to take some basic sequences and we're going to write them as linear functions. And what these, these sequences are called are arithmetic sequences. I like to think of them as an arithmetic sequence, and I'll talk about that in a second why I do that. Well, first of all, a sequence is just a set of numbers in a specific order. Uh, it could be anything. It could be adding by the same number, multiplying by the same number, anything like that. An arithmetic sequence, something specific happens. Well, first of all, it says the distance, or the common difference, we call it. And we're going to use the letter D for the common difference between successive terms is constant. So the distance between successive terms is constant. So basically, all we are is we're adding or subtracting by the same amount each time. And instead of saying subtracting, we're just going to say we're adding by a negative each time. Uh, and so that's why it's an arithmetic sequence, right? It's your basic arithmetic, adding and subtracting. So if I look at my sequence down here, 33, 29, 25, 21, 17, I think we can all see that each sequence, it's going down four, down four, right? So it's adding by a negative four or subtracting a four. So I would say it's common difference, or D is what we use, is a negative four. Because that's the distance between successive terms. It drops down four each time. So first things first, just being able to look at a sequence and determine if it's an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic sequence and then explain. Well, the explain part is just to tell me, does it have a common difference? So if it has a common difference, then it's an ar arithmetic sequence. So if I look at the first one, negative 15, negative 13, negative 11, negative 9. Well, from negative 15 to negative 13, I got to add 2, don't I? And then I add 2 again, and then I add 2 again. So is that an ar arithmetic sequence? You bet it is. And then I'll just say that the common difference is 2. That's how I explain it. If it has a common difference, then I know that it's an arithmetic sequence. Let's take a look at the next one. 7 eighths, 5 eighths, 1 eighth, negative 5 eighths. Well, the eighths stay the same. The denominator stays the same. But up top, I went down 2, and then I went down 4. So it's already changing, isn't it? Then I went down like 6. So really, I went down two eighths, and then I went down four eighths, and then I went down six eighths. So is that an arithmetic sequence? No, it's got to be the exact same. It's got to be the exact same going up or down. So I'd say no, and then something about, I mean, you could even point to this. I'm okay to show that you had something different each time, or you could say something about how there is no common difference, or... Um, it's adding or subtracting by a different amount each time, or multiplying by something, or something that tells me that you're not adding or subtracting by a constant number. Well, let's come up with that, that equation. I said we're going to write a linear equation for any uh, arithmetic sequence. So let's see how that works, or how we come up with that. So I have a sequence here, 8, 11, 14, 17, all the way to the nth term. The nth term, so we call our terms by the variable n. So 8 would be like the first term, 11 would be the second term, third term, fourth term, all the way to the nth term, any term. Basically, it could be the 100th term, it could be the 200th term, whatever I want to put in for n. So if I think about this, term n, well, let's look at my first term, my first term. The value is 8, right? The value is 8, so I'm going to go ahead and put that over by my number. The symbol we use... For the value that's in the first term is a sub 1. That's like saying this little 1 here, that's saying look at the first term, what's the value in that? And we use a, a kind of a big um, cursive A for that. a sub 1. And the expression, well, for now, the first term is always just the first term. So a sub 1. And I'll show you why we do that because we're going to come up with the equation. The second term, let's take a look at the second term now. The second term is, we use the symbol a sub 2 now, because looking at the value in the second term. Well, how do I get that 11? Didn't I just add 3 to it? I added 3, didn't I? So basically, I took, I took that first term, and I added 3 onto it. I added 3. Well, isn't 3 our common difference? 
I'm going to put that up here. 3 was our common difference. It's going up 3 each time. All right, plus 3, plus 3 yeah, every time. And then I got a value of 11. Okay? Let's think about our third term here. How do we get 14? Well, a sub 3, that's our third term. So now we took our first term. And we added on another 3, right? So plus 3 and plus 3. Or another way I could write that is plus my common difference times 2. All right, I'm just doubling my common difference. And I got a total of 14. And now I look at my fourth term. So we say 4, a sub 4 for my, the value of my fourth term. We really took the first term. And now we added three threes, three of my common differences. And we got a value of 17. So now let's write this for the nth term. The term, uh, it could be for any term, any term in my sequence. We call that a sub n, right, the value in that, in that term, whatever term that may be. Well, it looks like we're taking our first term, right, that's been consistent. And we're adding on, well, what is that 3? Isn't that our common difference up here? That's our common difference. So instead of writing 3, depending if it's a different sequence, I'm going to say D, right? The common difference. Well, and what's that number that's getting multiplied by? Well, really, if I look at the, the, second, the second term here, it took a 3 times 1, didn't it? 3 times 1. Well, what's happening there? Well, if I look, it's basically the term the term number before. So for term two, it was one. For term three, it was two. For term four, it was three. And how do we represent term with n, don't we? So it's really n minus one. So if I'm in the fourth term, looking at the fourth term, I take four minus one, which gives us three. Looking at that red one. And that's how we get our value. So here is our equation. We just came up with it. So to find any term in the sequence, or to find any value in the sequence, to find what, what term it is. If I said find the 80th term, I could simply plug in 80 for n, and I would plug in 3 for my common difference, and I would plug in, what was my first term? 8 for my first term. So if I wanted to find the 80th term, I would just plug in that information. I'd take 8 plus 3 times 80 minus 1. And I would solve for that. And that would be the value that's in my 80th term up here. Let's take a look at an example. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. So we said to find the value of any term, I take the first term and I add on the common difference times n minus 1. So first thing, write an equation for the nth term. That's what we're going to do here. Then find the 12th term of the sequence. Finally, graph the sequence. So we got to find the common difference first. It looks like it's going up 9 each time. Plus 9, so there's my common difference. So let's use my equation to find any term. I take the first term, which is 1 in this case, and I add on the common difference times n minus 1. I can simplify this, can't I? That might be a good idea. So I'm going to go a sub n equals 1 i got to distribute that plus 9. So i got plus 9n minus 9, right? 9 times a negative 1. And now I can combine my 1 and a negative 9 to give me a negative 8. So 9n minus 8. One plus, or 1 and a negative 9 gives me a negative 8. So now if I wanted to find the 12th term of the sequence, all I do is I plug in 12 for n. So to find the 12th term, I'm going to put in 12 down there too. 9 times 12 minus 8. So the 12th term would give me 9 times 12. Gives me 108 and subtract 8 for 100. So if I kept counting in my sequence and got over to the 12th term, I would end up at 100. Well, then it says, which term of the sequence is 172? Well, this is a little different now, isn't it? Let's take a look at my 
um, I equation I came up with. It says which term of the sequence, which term, which term, n, remember we're using n for term, is 172. So now we're saying the value is 172. So doesn't that plug in for the a sub n part? That's the value, 172 equals 9n minus 8. And now I could actually solve for n. Right? I could add 8 to both sides here, which I get, draw this over here, 180 equals 9n. And divide by 9 on both sides. And we end up with 20, don't we? So in the 20th term, I know that the value is 172, if I would keep counting over. Okay, so I could find both ways. I could find the value in the certain term number, or I could find which term number is, for depending on the value that you're given. Okay, so just a little bit on an arithmetic sequence. This is the, the main thing we got to remember. To find any value of any term, we take the first term we, and we add on the common difference times n minus 1.